I'm not here to attend the wedding. Instead, I'm here as kitchen help. Do we put the glass on the table or no? But I'm not sure how much help I really am because this is the first time I'm cooking for 3,000 packs in a day. Right now, my state of fatigue is tired. I'm Derek Cheung. You might remember me as the winner of MasterChef Singapore. That was the first time I stepped out of my comfort zone. And now, I'm doing it again. Derek, come, come. We do the right. In this series, I'll be exploring the business of big batch cooking. From festivals, to soup kitchens, Serving about 2,000 people, we need a large volume of vegetables. Mix this way, from down to yeah. up. What does it take to feed thousands with quality food, on time and within budget? Syed Hafiz is only 50 years old. You ready now? Let's go. Let's but go. he's already been to more than 7,000 Malay weddings. And that's because he's part of Nasreen Catering, one of Singapore's oldest Malay caterers. So Syed, how many people are we expecting for this week's event? This Sunday, we are actually having this three event, about 3,000 packs. 3,000 packs? Is yeah. that a normal load? Normal load is 1,000 packs, but this is quite high end for this week. It's about 3,000 packs. I wasn't expecting to cater for three weddings in one weekend. But Syed tells me that since the pandemic, big wedding celebrations have returned with a vengeance. In the 70s, there were no dedicated catering services. So we have to depend on our friends, kind neighbours to help things run. So this was common before in the Kampung days. So Gotong Ryong is a very common site. Gotong Ryong means to work together. And in my Kampung, in Lorong Asu, or in Aukang, I've seen Chinese neighbours actually help my grandmother to carry the pots here and there over the charcoal, some even blow the fire to make it, you know, to, to really light it up. Malay wedding evolved through availability of space and also help from the Kampung folks. When the Malays shifted from Kampung to flats, the only space that they could find was under the void deck. Places became very limited. You don't really see Gotong Royong that much. So it evolved to lesser of Gotong Royong. They engaged in, in catering services. Since 1978, my late dad started this business. We don't start as a catering company. We started off as a company that rents plates, pots to the caterers. But eventually, people come for us to have food. My father saw potential in the business. That's where he started to do a catering business. I start joining the business uh, because my father, at an early age of, of 44, he got a stroke. That time I was still schooling. So after that, my mother told me, don't go further your study, just rope into the family business. And till today, 27 years, I'm in the business. We have about 70 caterers before COVID. Now I think it's about 10 in the market running. So right now, where are we going? Now we're going to Param Place, my supplier, my mutton supplier. The centerpiece of this Sunday's weddings will be the mutton biryani. How many kg of ingredients are you talking about for rice and mutton for 3,000 packs? Rice is about easily 400 kg. Mutton is about 450 kg. Wow, that's crazy a lot. How many pots of biryani are we talking about? The biryani alone, we're talking about 15 pots. So say, how often do you come here to check out your mutton? Uh, and every Friday of the week. Lah. Because the storage is done by Param. So my manager got to come here, got to check the temperature and the quality before delivered to us. Ah, I see. Hello. Oh, nice. <laughs> morning, morning. So where is your mutton from? Mutton from Australia. Australia because they have a continuous supply. New Zealand also have, a bit even expensive also, but they can't supply the quantity of what we require in Singapore. So the quality is, is quite good? Yes, Australia quality is more than enough. So, Syed, is there a reason why you pick mutton from him? You need to get a big supplier because we are doing volume. Let's say I need tomorrow 300 kilo. Param is ready for me because Param got fleet of vehicles. He will deliver immediately to me. Yeah, because in our business, we need uh, the quality. The sizing. So we cut normally for him, according to what the size he want. Then service fridge, everything we prepare before one day we will deliver to him. Most kitchens get their ingredients delivered way ahead of time. Besides having his delivered 
just a day before the wedding feast. And I'll soon find out why. Besides pre-ordering the mutton, Syed also has to put in an order of desserts for 3,000 people. I was expecting to go to an industrial kitchen, but I've been directed to a HDB unit. Hello, Mr. Ghazali. Hey, hi, Derek. Hello, nice to see you. Hey, good to see you too. Wow. Come, please, come in. Come to my house. Creating cakes needs specialised equipment and dedicated storage space. So Syed has outsourced dessert making to Ghazali Murad, a baker. But I'm surprised at how little space there is. In fact, my home kitchen seems roomier. So I can't imagine where to begin baking dessert for 3,000 people. Where are we going to place everything? Okay, Mr. Ghazali, so yeah. this is where you bake for thousands of people? Oh yes, this. Really. You have to bake batch by batch every single time? Yes, correct. So how do you store them? I store them in my freezer. Ghazali's chest freezer is only 210 litre big, which means there's a limit to the type of desserts he can bake and store. They need to be dense, flat and stackable. So we are actually doing brownies? Yes, correct. Okay. So we'll start with butter and mix but with the sugar, right? Yes, correct. I think what really intrigued me about Mr. Ghazali's process is actually his planning. So he actually plans two weeks in advance. So he procures the ingredients, make sure he has enough ingredients for the bake, and also making sure that he has enough space to put all the cakes into the freezer. Everything goes in. So he only bake maybe 20 cakes for Wednesday, and then 20 cakes on Thursday, 20 cakes on Friday. He'll start to pace himself so that he has enough rest and to ensure that every batch of cake comes out very good condition. I start very early in the morning. I start about 5, then I finish around 10, 11. Once my kids is at home, so I'm not baking, I'm not doing anything, so they can uh, study at home. Now you can put this in the oven. Okay, so is that pre eating ready? Yeah, okay, like. no problem. Let's take it up. Two in each deck. Uh. Two in each deck, okay. Yeah. How long are you going to bake them for? One hour. One hour, yeah. Okay. Great, yeah. Okay, so one hour. Okay. Yeah, right, that's right. Okay, the brownie is ready. Okay. Okay, let me have you fish it out. Okay, you can take wow. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After one and a half hours, we've only made less than a tenth of what's needed for this Sunday. Hi, Ghazali. Hi, hello, Mama. Just on time for inspection? Yeah, that's right, man. It's important to control the quality of the cakes and, and the brownies and inspect whether they follow the hygiene protocols. One block like this can count how many pieces? 64 pieces. 64 pieces. 64 pieces. Yeah. If the taste is not according to our specs, we will ask them to redo. And if this happens more than three times, we might change for our vendors. A wedding, they take and straight away put in the mouth. Mm. So one person, no one piece. piece. Yeah, one person, one piece. You want to try first? Yeah. Let's, let's try, let's try. First. I definitely wasn't expecting a Master Chef style judging today. How's it? Fantastic, man. Oh, thank you, thank you mm. very much, thank you. This is mm. why he's a specialized, doing specialized job mm. for us. Because his brownie is fantastic. Oh, this is absolutely delicious. So I really like that the brownie is really nice and moist. Honestly, this is one of the best brownies I've had. Thank you. I can really tell why this is actually one of your signature items in your business. Thank you. Thank you. So we have done 14. How many more to go? Only 14 more to go. Only? Yeah. You seem very confident in yeah, this. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, let's get to work right, then. Come, let's get to work. So let me enjoy the brownie and you all go to work. Nineteen hours to the three weddings. 
and Param, the mutton supplier, is just starting to process Syed's order. By 7pm on Saturday, 450 kilograms of mutton are delivered to Syed's kitchen. Then around 400 kilograms of chicken arrive next. Okay, I'm gonna help you guys with the unloading. Okay, sure. Um, Yes, so for okay. 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 Cooking starts in 3 hours, and I'm still not sure why Syed would want to cut the delivery of his ingredients this close. When I first entered the central kitchen, I see a kitchen with lots of stove burners. There's no oven and there's no refrigerator, so everything is made fresh here. Think that they're going to cook for 3,300 people this weekend, it might be quite a challenge because there's about eight to nine stoves. I think you have to do batch cooking, batch by batch. Syed's kitchen is less than 170 square meters in size, with only 70% of that space available for cooking. The lack of cold storage here explains why Syed has all his fresh food delivered just before the cooking frenzy begins. It's now 10 p.m. The plan is to cook half the food by 8 a.m. for lunch that is due to start at 11 a.m. This will be delivered to the three wedding venues so that setup can begin. The food is kept warm in these heat insulated containers until they are ready to be dished out for serving. Meanwhile, the kitchen will finish cooking the other half and deliver it before the first half runs out. Oh, this is a very huge operation. Yeah, very huge operation. Yes, which I am something Today not we... used to. Very intense, okay. big batch cooking. There are five dishes to cook for the three weddings. We begin with the star of all Malay wedding feasts, Nasi Briyani. Nasi Briyani is a must-have. Nasi Briyani is yellow in colour, and yellow symbolises royalty. Yellow equates to gold, and gold equates to wealth. So when you have Nasi Briyani, it tells people that you're going to have a gold meal, a special meal today. In Singapore, we started to infuse other dishes like sweet sour fish, masak mira or, you know, or some ayam balado. Now this is to cater to other ethnic community. We want to invite them to come and savour the dish. What do you like? First, you have to put this one. So then you've got to put the spices. Okay, the spices. Then I'll put the salt. Put this pickle of the onion and then we okay. it. Okay, so now the mutton is actually boiling. Let it reduce a bit. Uh. Correct. Now we reduce okay. the fire. Yeah. We're waiting for the mutton to be soft. Before the rice goes in, the mutton needs to be braised till it's tender. And that can take two precious hours. Let it cook. In the meantime, Syed directs me to portion out dal for the dal cha, the lentil curry that goes with the biryani. Full, full scoop. Uh. Ready? You got count? I count. You never count? Eh? I don't know. I lost count or what? Counting data, you counted wrongly. We can't afford that kind of mistake because why? It's time consuming to readjust everything. And we don't have the luxury of the time. I count about 18 though. Cannot be. I didn't like 5 kilos, right? Okay, I I'm told to measure out 20 scoops of dal. But midway, I lose count. You bring one more, more out. No, no, out, out. One. Never count. Eh? One I count out. about 18. No. Eh? I don't know, I lost count or what? You I got count 20? 20. 20. Okay. Cannot be, I didn't like 5 kilo, right? Slightly more, around 5. La. Give one more. Yeah. I think half a scoop. Half a scoop. Half a scoop. Come scoop. carry. Wash first, then I'll wash. Luckily, Syed was there to rectify. Too little dal would cause the sauce to be not so thick and not having that mouthfeel. But too much, that sauce might be a little bit too thick. So I think in such an environment, consistency is very important. The mistake leaves me slightly embarrassed, but thanks to size sharp eyes, it doesn't hurt the cooking. Daddy, come, come. We do the rice. After an hour and a half... Is that standard enough? Yeah. So one pot is ready, we can start adding the rice in. But there are another five pots more, they haven't passed the tenderness test yet. So we've got to wait for it to boil, and then we check the texture again. When it's good, we'll go through the process of adding the tomato paste, spices, 
and fried shallots one more time. Five more pots of biryani need to be cooked before the stove space can be freed up for cooking the other four dishes. In six and a half hours, the food must leave the kitchen. What makes the best biryani is not how you cook it, it's how you play with the fire. So we have to slow down the fire in order to maintain the juice and not overheat the food. That is why it takes three hours. Last time, the traditional cooking of brandy, they use charcoal. On top, they put charcoal. So now, time has changed. So what we do now is that we have below fire and on top of the pot, also another fire. Because we need to cook the rice at a certain temperature and the mutton at a certain temperature also. So we want to maintain the heat and to maintain the freshness and the aroma. The first time we open the pot is always the bride and bridegroom or their family will eat first. So they know that we are giving them something that's fresh and they can taste it and they can evaluate it. This is something new to me. Not being able to taste or check if the food is cooked. But I'm told the biryani has never been rejected. So I trust in Syed's perfect track record. The first batch of biryani has been sent out and we are going to start okay. to cook bihun. Chili sauce. Chili sauce. Yeah. Okay, uh, so in this pot, we have added some oil, some garlic, red onion, dried chili paste, as well as some soybean. So it's about 7 a.m. right now. So this is actually the last dish we're going to make before we transport all the ingredients to the site. So this is just basically the sauce for the sweet and sour fish. In half an hour, the food needs to leave in three vans for three wedding lunches due to start at 11 a.m. But when we arrive at the loading bay, we find one van, the one bound for a void deck wedding at Jalan Tanaga, missing. As the man in charge of logistics, Muhammad has arranged for a backup van. We load the food. But there is a problem. The backup van is too small to hold everything. Eventually, the correct van arrives 10 minutes late. Yeah, this one, this one, this one. Bring now, bring now. Tenaga, tenaga. Okay, tenaga, all go to that side. And now, we have to scramble to move all the food over to the correct van. Check all the items. We have to go already. <laughs> Alright. Okay, done. By the time we're done, we're an hour behind schedule. While I head for the wedding taking place at the void deck, Syed's other two weddings are held in the ballrooms. During pre-COVID time, it was 80% void deck, 20% was ballroom. That point of time, uh, void deck was still in demand. But now, the trend has definitely changed. 90% of the customers that call us, they want a venue that is ballroom venue. From social media now, people see wedding in hotels, buffets, you know? It's more lavish and more stylish, and their family members can sit down and enjoy their wedding. Despite the surge in hotel ballroom rentals, most of the wedding feasts are still catered by companies like Sites, as hotels don't always have halal kitchens. I head to the wedding at Jalan Tenaga, which is taking place at a void deck. Ready the queen, ready the queen. When we arrive, we have less than an hour to set up, which is shorter than what Mohammed had hoped for. The crew and I have already worked 13 hours through the night, and we will need to work for seven more. Put down first, put down first. I'm okay. Uh, right now, my state of fatigue is um, tired, but still can work. We still can keep this going. Now we start to put them on the warmers. Yes, correct. Be careful. Take dalcha. Veggies, huh? Yes. You can see the mutton will go up. Can cover? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
It's time for the taste test that Syed mentioned earlier. The biryani has been left in a pot for 8 hours. So we'll mix it evenly. I can still feel its heat. The moment of reckoning is here. The family of the bridegroom is taste testing the biryani before the party begins. Will they approve of it? If there's an incident of food rejected by the customer, we activate our chef to make sure that we cook the particular dish. Hello. 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 How's everything? Oh, it's good. How's the mutton? The mutton is soft and tender. Oh, nice, nice, nice. I the texture of the rice. Okay, then the, the, how about the chicken? I think the chicken is uh, cooked to perfection. The taste is just nice because sometimes uh, ayam masak merah is too spicy, so it's, the kids cannot really consume it. If the food is not up to the standard, I think I will lose my job or you know I will retire from catering because the image has been tarnished. But it never happened before, so I'm still good. So when it's nice, you can go for the second round, eh? Oh my goodness, <laughs> yeah. Third round, third round okay. <laughs> The number of guests steadily increases as the day progresses. Until the moment they've all been waiting for. I think seeing the Malay couple walk through for the first time for their wedding, I think it was very heartwarming because I've come to know that I am part of that very important milestone in their life. That I actually helped to put the biryani on the table for the guests and their family to enjoy. And that I was part of this special operation. Right now it's about 5.30 p.m. I've been working non-stop for 21 hours and I'm very tired. But it was extremely worth it and I felt that Every time spent in this was very memorable. I have one very important task left to do, which is to clean up all the dishes and clean up the place. 